You know, you ever have one of those days? Have you ever had one of those days? Have you ever had a day that you, that, that just started poorly? Uh, that's the day I'm having today. Good morning. This is uh, Wednesday of the um, third, uh, second week of Advent. And um, if you don't hit the stream button, you can talk for eight minutes and nobody appears. And then people start checking on you and you're like, but I'm streaming. But you're not. Um, yeah, we just went live. How about that? Um, yeah, I, I recorded some videos yesterday. And so I hit the stream button, but I wasn't hitting the stream button. I was just simply recording. How about that? You like that? That's the way it goes. Mama said there'd be days like this. There'd be days like this, my mama said. Anyway, um, what a crazy morning. Good morning. Um, we're going to take a look at John's gospel today. We're going to um, see what we can do to come close to finishing John's gospel today, um, even though we started late. What a strange morning I'm having. What an absolutely strange morning. So I was on time, but I was only recording and I wasn't with you. How about that? Hmm. Ever feel out of sorts? That's the way I'm feeling right now. That's the way I'm feeling right now. Check the stream button might be added to the list. It's normally not an issue when, except when I record video shorts. I don't know what my problem is. I just don't know sometimes. I I don't think I've ever been any more absent-minded than I am right now, and it just gets worse. All right, we're going to finish John's Gospel. That's what I was trying to tell you. Uh, I did tell you, and now I'm telling you again, and now I'm telling you again for the third time. We are going to finish, but it's only the first time for you. We are going to finish John's Gospel this week. If I don't finish it today, um, Pastor Finker will finish it tomorrow. Tomorrow is our... Uh, regularly scheduled sit down. Um, it's our, um, uh, uh, it's our, um, we always have on Thursdays fireside and this will be our last fireside of the year. So next week, uh, tomorrow is our fireside chat, but we will see how, uh, thanks Miss Cindy. We'll see how close we get to finishing today. Um, again, cause I was already four verses in. I was wondering why y'all aren't talking. I just don't understand why I'm like this. But it's fun. All right, let's get going. Let's get rocking. Uh, we ended with the word, that the word was the key here. We ended with uh, there, that wonderful sort of section where he's he makes it very clear that the word, the word, the word is clear. Um, the key, he, he says, um, John, you believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. And that's why many books could be filled with the signs of Jesus. But these particular books are written. This was particularly written that. Um, oh, Marilyn, I'm sorry. The Lord's be with you and 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 our your families and our prayers at the death of your dad. I'm really really sorry about that. Um, really, now's not the day to pick on me. It's not the day to pick on me, S.J. Cam. I don't know who you are, but I think I know who you are. But uh, nah, it's not the time to pick on me. Um, let's see how close we can get to finishing so Finker doesn't have to. Um, these are written so you might believe that Jesus is a Christ and believing have life in his name. So after this, Jesus epiphany, that's the word, a Nerosin. That's what it means. Um, epiphany. So he epiphanied again. He revealed himself again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And um, he revealed himself. He, he epiphanied this way. Oh, 
Well, very cool, Marilyn. Um, uh, he rests from his labors. Blessed are those who, um, who die in the Lord. They rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And it sounds like his works are following him. That's the place for our works, by the way. Our works follow us. They follow us. Um, they don't get us into heaven. They just come on along afterwards. They're the fruit of a good tree, a Jesus-y tree. Um, so, uh, Simon Peter and Thomas, who's called twin, and we know all about his twinness. Um, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, 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 that's all folks. That never gets old. Even when I make that joke to myself and I'm only recording for me. Uh, Zebedee, 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 that's James and John's uh, kids. That's James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Um, and two other disciples were together. And Simon Peter said to them, um, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, you know what? We also are going to go with you. Don't worry, Suzanne. I was late too. Or I was on time, but not streaming. Continuing on. And they went out and they uh, got into the boat and they fished all the night and caught nothing. Ah, oh, Steve. Good to see you, buddy. The morning breaks and Jesus stood on the shore. Yet, the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Now, again, how do they miss this? How do they not know that he's Jesus? How do they not know who he is? Well, it's simple. Unless Jesus reveals himself to them, they, they, they will not know that it's him. They, they, they don't know that it's him. And so, um, you get this you get this wonderful moment where, they should know that it's him. It stands to reason that they would know that it was him, but they don't because he hasn't revealed himself to them. No, Newman, you're not a son of thunder. You're just Newman. Um, Jesus said to them, Paideia. Now that is very, very chummy. Um, that's very, very sort of friendship. That's a great song too. Jesus is a friend of mine. Um, this is very, very uh, friendly. Um, children, little ones. And you could call old, you could call older people little ones if you're old. Like I I like to look at um 40-year-olds and be like, "Oh, young pup." Cuz I'm so old, you know. Um children, do you have any fish? I love it. I just absolutely love it. So he 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 families them. He 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 chums them. He he buddies them. The, He's like, hey, you got any fish? And they answered, ooh, no. That is no. We got nothing. And he said to them, balate estadexia. Put it on the right side of the boat. And you will find some. And they cast it. They threw it. They threw their nets. And and they were they were not able to, uh, to haul in because of the large amounts of fish. Ah, oh, it's a miracle. And he's done this before. He's done it before. He's done it before. Now, not in John's gospel. He did it in Luke's gospel. But clearly, John doesn't care about only being in his gospel because they know it's him from what he's done. 
And so the disciple, whom Jesus loves, said to Peter, Ha curious esten, it is the Lord. And when Peter heard that it is the Lord, he, he put on his outer garment, for he was um, naked, and he threw himself into the sea. So, um, you fish with very little on, because it's hot. Um, and so on a hot day, you fish with as little as you, you work with as little as you can on. And what is interesting about this is that, have you ever gotten so flabbergasted that you do something that doesn't make any sense whatsoever? Um, and th this is, um, this is Peter. He puts on his outer garment and then jumps in the water. That just, um, that's just odd. Uh, the, the, the text notes says uh, the outer garment was used to, um, was to, was to tend to the morning, morning chill. But like, I want you to sort of ponder this a little bit. He puts it on and then gets in the water, which is going to make himself cold. But again, he's so excited about the Lord that he just jumps in like two feet. He just jumps in. Would that we were this excited about the Lord that we would put on our outer garment and jump in the water. He's coming. Make ready. Um, just hilarious just hilarious he's so excited that he just jumps in the water he just jumps in nothing nothing holding him back just he just hops in the water with his outer garment on he made sure he put on his outer garment threw himself into the sea. The other disciple came into the boat. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not yet far behind from the land, oh, about 100 yards off. Okay? So they're about 100 yards off. That's a translation of... Um, they're about... Um, Two hundred cubits. When they got to the land, they saw a charcoal fire in the place with fish laid on it and arton and bread. You know, it's just a, it's 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 one of those it's one of those things, and this is reminiscent of um, um, his feeding of the five thousand, bread and fish. Um, it's 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 reminiscent of that. Um, it calls it to mind, but there there is this very sort of everydayness to this appearance. There's nothing supernatural about it. It's not. Um, it's very everyday. It's very sort of normal. Oh, by the way, here's Jesus sitting on the side with the fish. Hey, children, you got anything to eat? No, well, well, you know, throw it on the side and you'll catch something. But he's already got fish. Um, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. But he's, he's got not enough for everybody, though. So bring some of the fish you just caught. Just so very ordinary, so very every day. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore. 
full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. I want you to sort of take this in a little bit. Um, um, that's the miracle too. So the miracle is, one, the miraculous catch of fish. Two, he's alive. Three, um, the net's not broken. Okay. It's all, it's all there, but it's so common. It's so, it's a day fishing. It's, 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 it's a morning and there's a friend. Oh, buddies, how you doing? Did you catch anything? Well, you know, put your, uh, I mean, there, there, uh, this is your life. This is your life. This, don't get me wrong on this. This is your life. It, 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 at the same time, there's miracles in the midst of the everydayness of your life. You see them, maybe you don't see them. Nevertheless, the miracle still of the resurrection of Christ covers everything along with um, other things which may um, happen along the way, not just healings or or actual sort of God strikes, but the everydayness of God being with you always in your in your baptism, in the word, in the body, in the blood. You have this, um, and it, 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 it it's common, it's every day, and you see it. I'm going to have like a Bill Murray speech. You see it, and once you see it in the Gospels, you don't miss it. You don't miss everything that he does. The unbeliever would say, oh, it's just an irregular day. Just a very day. Um, oh, there's a there's a 90s. Just a day, just an ordinary day. Um, I was by a Jones guy, but it's not a very famous song. It's a one one hit wonder that was on Smallville, but um, uh, you just get this 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 sort of this every this this sort of commonality, but you don't see it as common. You see it as Jesus, and no one could tell you otherwise. No one could tell you otherwise. So you go to the doctor, they find a spot, um, while they're looking for something else. They're looking for something else, and they find a spot. Or you, um, so you go to the doctor because you break your arm. There you go. They x-ray your arm, but they happen to catch something else. You see it. God was working through it to save you. Everything, he's in all the common places. And yet he's in more. He's there, but he's not. He doesn't appear to be, like, so he, like he has an epiphany here on the shore, but it's so common. It's so every day. But you don't miss it as a miracle. The same with your life. Your life is common. It's every day and all of that. But yet, you would you would say God's working through everything and he's doing everything to save me. Why 153 fish? Why not 154 fish? I mean, because that's the number he caught. There's, there's nothing to that number. It's a lot of fish. But that's it. That's the number he caught. That's the number he had. The song, the band, Feeder. I don't know what you're talking about, Miss Cindy. And it was an obscure song. Um, that was the one I liked, though. It was a good song. Um, I had to find it after the the episode of Smallville, and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I finally found it some some very obscure website. It's by a guy whose last name is Jones. Ordinary Day. Um. Greg Jones. Greg Jones was the guy. Yep, yep, yep. That was the guy who wrote that song. Just today, just an ordinary day. Um, do it uh, 
Oriste Sata. Come and have breakfast. And no one, not a one, none of the disciples um, asked him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. So they, so once he revealed himself, no one need ask if he was the Lord or not. They just simply knew that he was the Lord. So um, um, no one needed to ask, uh, are you the Lord? They knew it was the Lord because of who he is, because of um, just like, just like, just like when God does stuff for you, you don't need to ask him if he's done it or not. You don't. No one needs to tell you that he did something. You know that he did it. And you can't understand what, how anyone could could not see it either. Oh, man, well, that's not the right song. Um, Look at that. Let's call it multitasking. But no one will tell you otherwise. That's why you look at the way in the way of faith. You see the universe and you see Jesus' work in there and no one can tell you. In fact, you can't fathom how they don't see it. Here, they don't need to know that it's the Lord because they know it's the Lord because he's revealed himself to them and he's at the breaking of the bread. He's at the, he's at the bread and the fish point. He's at the chummy Hey, you caught anything? Put your net on the other side of the fish. He's done this before. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them. And the fish also, which is exactly what he did, which is exactly what he did. Um... In the in the feeding of the five thousand, he took bread, gave it to them, bread the fish, gave thanks, broke it. This is now the Triton, the third time Jesus epiphany to his disciples, um, after he had egger face, he, he stood up from the dead. After he raised from the dead. Hmm. Hmm. And now. When they had finished having breakfast. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, do you agapace me plaon tutone? Do you love me more than these? Uh, two Greek words, agapao and phileo. Okay. Um, this is where people talk about uh, agap uh, agape and phile. Not like the fish. Um, Phileo Adelphoi is Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love and questionable vote counting. Um, the uh, uh, Phile is like friendship love. Agapao is like um, love that sacrifices. Now, there, there are some linguistic uh, folks that think that those words, these two words are interchangeable. They're not interchangeable with eros, which is the, the, the love, you know, sort of lusty love, uh, erotic love. But you've got these two different words. And so first he says, look, do you love me more than these? Do you love me like you love God? Do you, do you love me more than you love these? Hmm. 
what's going to happen here. He said to him, Nay, Kyrie, yes, Lord, you know that I flip oh you. You know that we are BFFs. Interesting. This is an interesting exchange. Um, this is an interesting exchange to sort of contemplate. Um, uh, Um, I want you to sort of, how many times did he deny him? Three times. He denied him three times. And here, Jesus seeks him out. Seeks him out. Simon, do you, do you love me like you love God? Do you love me like God loves you? Oh man, you are my best friend. Of course I love you. Feed my lamb. And he said to him again, Simon of John, do you love me? Do you agapos me? Do you love me? And Peter answers, yes, Lord, you, you, you know that I phileo you. There it is again. Um, it's, it, again, linguistically, there's a difference in their words. Um, again, some people would argue that these two words are the same. I think it's interesting. I think it's very, very interesting that, that Jesus asks him twice, do you agapao me? And the response is, yeah, you're my best friend. Tend to my sheep. You can take from this what you want, and I'd be interested to ask, you can ask the dean on Friday about it. Um, it's a very, very interesting exchange. Now, notice, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Um, look, Peter, this isn't about you, this is about them. And it's, it's, it's almost as if the reconciliation that occurs is not only for Peter, but for you and me, so that Peter would apostle us with the words and promises of God. Um, you got this moment where, and what I, what I, the reason why I think these two words are unique is what happens next. So remember, do you agapao me? Do you love me? Do you love me like you love God? Oh, you're my best friend. Uh, feed my lambs. Do you, do you, Simon, John's son, do you do you love me like you love? Do you love me like God loves you? Well, yeah, you're my best friend. Don't you know that you're my best friend? And there probably was a little bit of desperateness to it because Peter knows that Jesus knows that he denied him three times because Jesus told him he was going to do it. And he said to him a third time. And this is important. Why a third time? Because he denied him three times. It's not the third time's a charm. It's that he denied him three times. Peter, the, and the reason why I love this is because of the phileo. Twice he asked him, do you agape me? Do you, do you, do you love me? Um, however unique Agapao is from phileo. Do you love me like that? And Peter's response was always friendship. You are my best buddy. And the third time Jesus meets Peter where Peter is, he changes the word he uses. So um, the first two, do you agapao me? And then the third one, do you phileo me? And I, I think that these words are unique. Um, 
And I think it's interesting that Jesus meets him in the word, even with the word that, um, uh, even with the word that, and, and Pastor Lester goes, right, shepherding shows up three times in First Peter. Twice as a noun that refers to Jesus and once as an imperative addressed to pastors, which is the way you should think. Um, because shepherd is the Latin word. Um, the, the Latin word for shepherd is pastor. That's what your pastor is. And this is a holy ministry text, which is why I want to leave it with, with um, Pastor Finker um, to finish. But, and I'm going to, I'm going to, finish in the middle of it so he's forced to text to, to, to deal with it but I, what, I, what, I, what I want you to sort of ponder and ask Finker is is notice the change do you agapao me well yes I phileo you do you love me Simon son of John do you agapao me you, you know that I love you I phileo you and then finally Simon do you do you love do you, do you phileo me and Peter was grieved I'll bet he was that Jesus asked a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know everything and you know that I phileo you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. It's an interesting word, bosco. Not the word I would... Um, not the word that I normally would would expect here because that's not normally it's 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 more like graze my sheep all three times so um uh the third time um there's a there's a verb change here too let's take a look at it a little bit let's see if I can pull this down feed my lambs so it started out with 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 Bosque, which is which is this word that is just like graze my sheep, graze my lambs. So so graze my lambs, feed my sheep, graze my sheep. There's a verb change there, and there is a distinction between it because because this um, Bosco word means to tend to to animals, while um, Wapoimane means to actually sort of um, shepherd. Okay, so it's like, like, um, I want you to, I want you to graze my sheep, shepherd my sheep, graze my sheep. There's a lot, the, the, the language is moving here and, and it's something to ask um, Finker what he thinks about it. Um, but it ends with grace my sheep. And we're going to stop here on 18, but I do want to uh, tell you a couple of things. And so Pastor Finker's going to finish the book on Friday. Tomorrow is our regular scheduled um, sit down time and that is only on my HT. So if you're looking for the Bible study tomorrow, you will not find it on Facebook. You will only find it on myht.higherthings.org. It's the only place where you'll find it. Um, so, yeah. After the first of the year, January 4th, we will resume our Bible study uh, time. We'll be doing the book of Romans. Um, but there may be some caveats to that, and so look for information from Higher Things on how to get to that. But um, Romans begins after the first of the year. And so, um, uh, after the first of the year, Romans, that starts January 4th in the new year. It'll still be Christmas. It'll be still be Christmas. Thank you for hanging around a little later today. I'm sorry for the um, thing. Pastor Finker will probably plow through this whole section again. And so you will have um, an ample time to get an expert on it, our Dean of Theology. You've been slumming with me. But um, have a blessed day, and I will see you tomorrow for our reg regularly scheduled um, uh, fireside chat. I, I should put on a nice coat with a you know sort of you know uh, sort of a, a, a fireside coat, but I, I don't think I'll do that. Have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow.